it's good to be home. I just came back from a trip clear across the country. We had to travel to three different time zones. So when our plane landed, I had to keep changing the time on my watch. At the airport in Houston, I saw some information about the International Space Station. I wonder how the astronauts on the ISS set their clocks when they're traveling through so many different time zones. Find out next on Real World. I am not a morning person. I guess I should be happy I only have to wake up to the sun shining in my bedroom only once a day. But the International Space Station orbits Earth roughly once every 90 minutes. That means the astronauts on board the ISS end up seeing 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every day. If the ISS is moving through the day so fast, the people on board must be going through a lot of different time zones. And because of that, it would be very easy for the crew members on the ISS to get confused about what time it is. It's 8.13 p.m. It's about 11.30. It's about 6.30. 8.30. It is 10.30 in the morning. Don't worry, the astronauts aren't actually confused. They're just giving the times for the hometowns. I'll let European Space Agency astronaut Frank DeWin talk a little bit more about time and how it works on the International Space Station. So, you have seen that my crewmates have very different timings in their hometowns. Well, in fact, there are 15 countries involved in the International Space Station. And these countries span from more than 15 time zones. At any given moment, the time difference between two member countries could be as much as 18 hours. Imagine if someone told you that they will pick you up at 4.30, but neglect to tell you that it will be at 4.30 Alaska Standard Time. That could make a big difference to your plans of the day. Imagine how important it must be for the International Space Station that all participating countries agree on what time we have a meeting conduct an experiment or return home from space. It doesn't really matter which time zone we use when coordinating our plans across the globe. But for historical reasons, all of the international partners used Greenwich Mean Time, abbreviated GMT. This time zone is often referred as Universal Time or World Time, but it could also be called for us Space Time, because that is what we use here on the International Space Station. Now don't get too excited, that's not the space-time continuum you hear about in those movies with time travel. Space-time is just another name for universal, or Greenwich Mean Time. And Greenwich Mean Time is how astronauts set their clocks so that everyone is working on the same schedule. Our bodies are tuned into the amount of daylight we experience. Scientists call that our circadian rhythm. Even though the day-night cycle is so fast on board the ISS, the astronauts still use the 24-hour day they are used to. But to make sure that they are getting the right amount of sleep, their schedules are carefully planned. Besides eating, sleeping, and exercising in space, astronauts use a big part of their day to help scientists on Earth conduct experiments on the only national laboratory in microgravity, the International Space Station. And for years, NASA has helped connect students with astronauts in orbit through interactive events, student challenges, and video downlinks. Another exciting way to get on an astronaut's schedule is through a program called ARIS, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. Astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the International Space Station have an amateur radio, or ham radio, station at hand for recreation and educational activities. It provides contacts with family and with the general public for the astronauts working in space for months at a time. Commander William Shepard worked hard to make sure that an amateur radio station was on board the ISS. Using the call sign assigned to the space station, Shepard completed the first ever air risk contact on December 21st, 2000. In 2003, the 100th school contact from space was made using the ISS ham radio. As these connections continue, students from schools in Webster, New York, Boulder, Colorado, Honolulu, Hawaii, and Tallahassee, Florida, to name just a few, have had the opportunity to ask questions about living and working in space. Amateur radio clubs and individual ham radio operators on the ground help the high-flying ham astronauts complete their contacts with schools. There's no time like the present. So visit the NASA website to find out how you can download an ARIS application for your school. Who knows, maybe you'll be one of the next groups to schedule a chat with the astronauts on board the ISS. What questions do you want to ask? See you next time on Real World.